All right, ladies and gentlemen, and now we're back with a community showdown between the dwarves and the dinos. It's going to be Yumais, the Mountain King, facing off against totally not hacking. Very convincing. Looks like it's going to be uh, Dwayne Garak Johnson versus Thoric Ironbrow. I'm pretty sure every dwarf game is just going to be with Thoric. He's just so much better than many of the other dwarven lords. Uh, so we're probably going to be seeing him pretty much every single game, which I don't mind. I think he's a super cool character. It's always a shame when like you see a pick and the like nonstop for a faction, and then it's just like a lane character. But at least Thoric is a badass for sure. He's got some. He's got some uh, bump and biceps, and uh, he's got that cool altar and the Anvil of Doom. There's all sorts of cool stuff. Is that, is that shooting? Oh, for a second, I thought the Iron Drakes were shooting like right out of the gates. I was like, how are they in range? Now, for the Dwarven army here, let's actually go ahead and pause. In the front line, it's going to be Longbeards backed up by Iron Breakers, and Longbeards are excellent against Dinos. They trade well with all the Lizard Infantry. They dominate Soros. They're immune to psychology. The only thing they would lose to are like Temple Guard, and yeah, they're really, really good here. Iron Breakers in the back. It looks like there's going to be a single Iron Drake and then a triple Dawi Cannon. Very, very interesting. So three of those. I haven't seen a triple Cannon build in quite some time. Longbeards in the back and Thoric Ironbrow. Now for the forces of totally not hacking, it's going to be a, a big armor-piercing swarm. So you got two cheap Bastilodons, which are, you know, dirt cheap at 650 or 600 gold and they have good AP and a good presence. A bunch of Croxagors with their spanking paddle mixed in with Red Crested Skinks. I mean, this is a pretty efficient army. It's just... A bunch of armor piercing, you know, some good mass that's cost effective to get in there. And uh, Dwayne Garak Johnson has always been a staple against the dwarves. Should be able to put some hurt on Thoric, although Thoric with his runes active might be able to give him a good run for his money. Thoric also does have a lot more HP, so that is something to consider. But uh, yeah, Dwayne Garak Johnson, a very cost effective choice here in this matchup. There's a couple you could probably get away with. Oxyodl, eh, I don't know if I'd pick him. Like, he'd only really be good at shooting dwarf characters, which I don't know how that'd go. Anyways, an attempted mobile shot there with the Rune of Wrath and Rune. Unfortunately for the Dwarves, the timing was a little bit off. It didn't quite hit those King Cohorts. But uh, nonetheless, Thorica, you know, he's he's ushering his, uh, his, his bearers here to carry him back. And these guys, man, imagine how... Imagine the spine issues these guys must develop. I guess Dwarves have technically like a different physiology. So for them, it's probably like, you know what? Yeah, we're okay. We're sturdy folk. We work in the mountain. We live to be, you know, three, four hundred years old, whatever it is. And uh, yeah. So the Bastilodon moving in, the Longbeards are braced for this, so they will be getting their charge defense, but they won't be getting it against the Croxagors who come in with their spanking paddle. However, Croxagors do have pretty bad. It's not like crazy good charge bonus anyways. The Ruin of Doom is active. Man, that is so good for dwarves too. Like getting, giving all these Longbeards that nice little buff is just so, so solid. Up in the high ground, blasting charges into the Red Crested Skinks, and all three cannons seem to be functional at this point, but a very aggressive play here from the Lizardmen, actually getting the Bastilodons onto the Iron Drakes and getting Croxagors onto the cannons. And one thing I'm noticing about this Dwarf Army, actually, is there's no Slayers of any sort. We're not seeing Dragonback Slayers or any Giant Slayers, which normally would be a tool you would use to peel off Croxagors in this type of situation, to get them away from your value targets. But in this case, the Dwarves are going to have to do it the good old-fashioned way. Now, in the front, Iron Breakers fighting shoulder to shoulder with the mighty Rune Lord. I always call him the Rune He's a Rune Lord. Smashing the Anvil as he duels Dwayne Gorok Johnson. But Gorok is, is pretty pissed off. He's got the Mace of Ulamok, the Shield of Aeons, Rock of Itza. And you can see Thoric Ironbrow is getting his butt kicked here. He is having a bad old time. So he's probably going to want to get out of that situation. Now in the backfield, the Lizards have done some good work. The one cannon has been shut down by the Summoned Manticore. The Bastilodon's rampaging. However, the Dwarves have secured these other two cannons. And this flank looks very dominant for the Dowie. Here, the Red Crested Skinks are buckled off. The Croxagors are just being dragged down through pure attrition and being shot point blank by these cannons. The other cannon crew is running for the hills. A lot of the game will probably come down to whether or not the Dwarves can salvage their cannons in the late game. Because without the cannons, the Croxagors and various monsters are going to be a big problem to deal with, for sure. And, you know, not to say Longbeards aren't uh, units that can stand and fight there. But Longbeards with the Axe and Shield aren't known for their armor piercing, right? So they're not going to be exceptional at getting through uh, said units. So one cannon getting back online. Yimai is doing the cannon dance here as the Bastilodon continues to move out. Again, no Slayers. Uh, though we do have some Iron Drake Trollhammer Torpedoes. They could also be a big factor, but nice play here by uh, the Lizards moving the Red Crescent Skinks through the battle lines on top of the Iron Drakes, who do manage to rip a couple shots. Oh, the Croxagore getting it right in the face. He is down for the count. I feel a little bit bad for that Crocodile. I feel a little bit bad. Nonetheless, Iron Drakes dragged through the mud. The Red Crested Skinks will be able to easily finish them off. Bounce of power looking pretty good for the Dinos right now. They're definitely in a slightly more commanding position, but this game is far from over. We have a lot of Iron Breakers here. We have Longbeards that are pretty healthy across the board. The Croc scores did take a, a bit of damage. You know, the cannons have been standing and fighting despite being swarmed. We still have two cannons shooting, and those cannons are dragging down the Croc scores. And if the Croc scores can be removed from the equation, then suddenly the Dwarvish Infantry have a big advantage. Flock of Doom going down. It looks like both Manticore summons have been used. That's the classic. I'm almost starting to think 
Yeah, a Flock of Doom and Manscore Summon is still so good, but Curse of Onrar now is a pretty good debuff after the changes, but ooh, this is not good for the Dowie. The Red Crescent Skink swarming into the backfield. The Dwarven Cannons have done great this game, despite being, uh, you know, constantly pushed on. Thoric Ironbrow, you know, a good AP character. He's getting in there and trying to fight the Feral Bastilladon, and the Rune of Doom is active once again. The, the Dwarf Wa is here. You can see melee attack going down on the Longbeards. Their leadership barely holding. They're basically sitting on zero. Very, very uh, sketchy stuff there for those guys, but... They do eventually break. So Croxigors and Saurus Warriors moving in are going to be swarming back towards the cannons. More blasting charges from the Iron Breakers saturating into the Saurus Warriors and other uh, units there. But will Thoric and the boys be able to hold? I mean, if anybody's going to be really good at holding a Dwarven position, it's going to be Thoric. With his roughs, uh, his roughs, his runes. It's not a dog. With his runes, he's going to be able to hold the line here. Getting that nice ward save against the armor piercing of the Bastilladon. Uh, but Dwayne Grok Johnson, also another presence. He's a really good sustained combat character. 675 right now with 85 melee attack. I mean, that is no joke. These Iron Breakers are for sure, uh, you know, losing models ever so slowly. But, you know, it's it's like the... Uh, you guys ever see that YouTube video where it's like the guy is being hunted? Uh, so there was an old horror movie back in the day. A little bit of a tangent will go on here. But there was an old horror movie back in the day where, like, this like mo I can't it's like called it follows or something where this like creature like walks after you and follows you but it permanently follows you so even if you go like cross state or cross country it'll find a way to follow you basically but it's not like chasing you like turbo zombies would be in a movie uh but there was a YouTube video where there's like it's basically that same premise but the get the monster it only attacks you with a spoon and the spoon that it uses it like lightly taps you it, it like so it's like death by like a thousand spoon blows but it just never stops it's Anyways, that's basically what's happening over here, right? Like, Gorok's got, Gorok's got a spoon, he's getting in there, and he's doing that steady damage. Now, the dwarves are kind of rallying here a little bit. Thoric able to hold his backfield position. Uh, cannon crews back online. We even have a couple Trollhammer torpedoes. That could be really big. It's actually really, really showing the uh, the perseverance of the Dowie here. And I think a lot of it is the fact that these Iron Breakers are just, you know, they're just linebackers holding back that Bastilladon. Dwayne probably should have, I think the Lizards may have gotten a little bit too comfortable. I think Dwayne should have been chasing Thoric the entire time. I mean, he's faster than Thoric, and he probably could have killed him if he had just stayed on his tail. But Thoric was allowed to fall back peacefully and salvage this backline situation a little bit. As the Dwarven Cannon Crews are trying to get back online. Look at this. They're like sitting near it. They're like, oh, give us the cannons, precious. And yeah, they're going to be moving. Oh my god, are we going to get like point blank cannon shots? And the Trollhammer Torpedoes, even though there's only three of them, I mean, that is very substantial. Those Trollhammer Torpedoes are going to be huge players here as they shoot into that Frail Bastilladon. So the battle is on, man. What a great scrap back, but still the Dinos still have an advantage. They got those Crocs scores. Dwayne is still fighting the good fight. Ironbreaker is finally getting worn down. The Rock of Itza is active, but I think he needs to get back here. Thoric is just probably generating so much value fighting back here. Let's go ahead and actually double check him. So, And on top of that, with Thoric being alive, you know, he's going to be uh, using this exactly what I was about to say, the Rune of Doom. Uh, and that's constantly making these Ironbreakers and Longbeards fighting way above their pay grade. And just those three Trollhammer Torpedoes, how clutch are they? Shooting in, showing the true tenacity of the Dowie as they stand there with 64 HP. But uh, this is going to be the end. A bunch of angry crocodiles. And imagine how bad this would suck to be these guys and just have these crocodiles coming at you. But that's going to be it. Good night, sweet dwarves. Uh, you guys will be missed, for sure. But the ancestors will celebrate your sacrifices this Last war fights valiantly against the crocodiles. So looking around, we do have some long beards returning. What units do the dinos have? Looking around, it almost makes me think that the Ark of Sotek might be really good in this matchup. Although it does cost a thousand gold, but the Ark of Sotek does like kind of a damage over time effect now. Uh, so it's really, really could be good at killing like Ironbreakers and Longbeards and stuff. So Dwayne is is kind of fighting alone here. That Feral Bastilladon uh, is is on running for the hills. The Shield of Aeons is an AOE buff, giving it 200 armors. That's no joke either, but. Thor Thoric Ironbrow probably just needs to stay away from Dwayne. He's going to be moving back here, going after the Croc scores. This is the opportunity for the Lizards to get back in this game and win it. If uh, Dwayne can, you know, finish off Thoric, I think the Lizards might still be able to get it just through attrition because he's very tough to kill. But Thoric does use that really nice Rune of Negation to give him the 40% ward save, and he uses his uh, his superior agility to get away from Dwayne, which is very strong. Now we got... Oh, there was another unit of Ironbreakers. Oof, that is very, very meaty. The Ironbreaker is moving across, going after the Croxagores. Dwayne trying to keep up, but he can't quite do it. One Bastilladon has rallied up on the high ground, and the cannons are back online. There's a single cannon shooting point blank into the Croxagores. Man, that is some beautiful stuff. And the Cold Blooded is the only reason they're still fighting. Once that wears off, these Croxagores will probably 100% break. And it's still going to be a tough grind to kill Gorok, but I think Gorok being surrounded by Ironbreakers and potentially cannons being online might be enough. But here comes the Feral Bastilladon. Ironbreakers and uh, Longbeards, of course, a very solid leadership. Ironbreakers are not ITP, they're not immune to psychology, but Longbeards are. 
Uh, Thoric himself is strangely not immune to psychology, but uh, you know he's going to be moving back in there to fight. So alligators are broken. Thoric is going to be bringing his armor piercing the bear as he goes into combat against the feral basilodon. So 1500, and does Thoric connect with his first shot? He does not. The Bastilladon, giving the business back a little bit as Dwayne tries to make his way over, but Dwayne is also not the highest mass of characters. Feral Bastilladons don't have the best leadership. Typically, the Feral Dinosaurs do not. Gets a nice little charge in there and takes out a couple. Ooh, look at this. Bastilladon actually rallied in the distance. That could be very, very clutch for the Dinos, but the Ruin of Doom is active. The Dwarf Army angry once again. Thoric Ironbrow rocking a mighty 69 melee attack. This ancient Rune Lord who has lived for many years uh, apparently knows how to live and is going to be going after uh, Gorok here. Gorok is sitting at 21 1 HP. So, not, not you know, super low, but the dwarves are definitely pulling ahead. And, uh, you know, Thoric is good enough combatant that with a little bit of support should be able to win this. And what I really love about this is that Yumais gets the cannons online and he marches them away. He's, like, trying to get them uh, get some space uh, to then turn around and shoot. So then if the dwarves did, for example, lose this engagement, they would be able to have some cannon uh, separation, which could be very good. And I don't know how, man. Thoric has been just juking Dwayne this entire game. Probably going to pile in, go after that Feral Bastilladon, and uh, now the cannon's online, shooting directly at that Feral Bastilladon. And the other cannon crew is back as well. Man, the dwarves really are... Uh, I just hit my microphone. Sorry if that made some weird sound, but the dwarves are a very tenacious folk. So the Bastilladon at 733. Thorek just being an absolute G, getting in there, smashing the Feral Bastilladon. 200 armor, not going to save you from the might of the Rune Lord. And now I will spare you guys, because I don't know the outcome of this game, but I know the situation. It can be quite grindy, so we'll just kind of fast forward here. As uh, Gorok tries to chase, he goes on the cannon crew, takes out the cannon, the other cannon shooting, and Thorak charges in once again, gets a nice shot. The dreaded Dwarven cycle charges. The Rune of Doom is active, and that is going to be GG well played. Awesome game between Yumais and totally not hacking. He's probably someone playing under an alias, but that was a fun match. You know, I, the triple Ironbreaker, man, 1,200, 800, 14, pretty good value despite the fact that there was a lot of tough targets for them. But yeah, Ironbreakers were great. It was just kind of a, uh, a, a an endurance dwarf build, right? Didn't have you know, the traditional slayers to defend things. It was like, hey, man, you just grind through this armor and uh, let's see how this goes. And with Thoric's Rune of Doom, like the DPS of this army is exponentially raised, which is very strong. Cannons did okay. I would have liked to have seen like one less Ironbreaker with like one Slayer just to peel off for the cannons. But even still, I mean, it worked, right? Like it worked. So, and Yumais is a much better player than I am. So, especially at Dwarves. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt. All right, my friends, hopefully you enjoyed this Dwarf vs. Dino game. It was a really fun, well played, it totally not hacking as well. Apparently he wasn't hacking today. And uh, that is it. Cheers. Take care of yourselves. See you next time.